of these centers. Okay, so the first one we're going to look at is a circumcenter. Some of these, yes, I know they have really weird names. <clears throat> um, but the circumcenter is created by the perpendicular bisectors. Okay, and here's what the perpendicular bisectors uh, do, where they come from, what's going on. Um, <clears throat> what happens is you find the center point, the midpoint <coughs> on a side. So let's look at side AB to start with. Point X is the midpoint of side AB. It cuts it into two equal segments there, AX and XB. And then we draw a perpendicular line to that. And technically these lines are going to extend, but the picture is cleaned up to find their intersection point. But XM there is the perpendicular bisector for side AB. Then you go through and you do that for all the sides. Y is the midpoint of um, <clears throat> the side BC, and we draw the perpendicular line there, YM, and then Z is the uh, midpoint of side AC, the perpendicular line there extends. That intersection point right there in the middle, M, is what is referred to as the circumcenter. Now, the special property about the circumcenter, and I think you can kind of see it in the picture here, is the circumcenter is the same distance from each of the vertices. From M to A, from M to B, and from M to C, that is all the same distance. So the circumcenter is what we call equidistant. Equidistant is just a fancy way of putting the two words equal and distance together uh, from each vertex of the triangle. So equidistant is equal distance. <clears throat> so that means that AM, segment AM, is equal in length to segment BM, which is equal in length to segment CM. Okay, from the circumcenter to each vertex is the same distance. Then we have what we call the in center. The in center is created by the angle bisectors, as you can see there on the illustration. <clears throat> All of those angles have been bisected, cut in half, and the intersection point of those angle bisectors is the point M, which is the end center. The end center is also equidistant, but it is equidistant from each side. So that's why there are perpendicular segments drawn in this triangle it's measuring the distance from the in center to the side of a triangle. We measure it uh, perpendicularly. <clears throat> so in this case, when we look at the figure, XM, YM, and ZM all have the same length. XM, oops, YM, and ZM all have the same lengths. It's the distance from the in center to the side sides of the triangle is the same in this case. Okay, um, it's a little bit harder to see in this picture, but hopefully you can kind of look at it and see that the distance to the, ver the vertices is not the same as it is in the first figure. Uh, the circumcenter and the incenter are in slightly different locations. I know they look pretty close, but they are in slightly different locations. <clears throat> yeah. If the triangles, uh, if it were exaggerated a little bit more, um, you would be able to see more of a difference between the circumcenter and the incenter. Okay. The next one is what we call the centroid. The centroid is created by the medians. 
And here's how we create a median. A median is created by a vertex connected to the midpoint of the opposite side. Okay, a median is created by a vertex connected to the midpoint of the opposite side. So let's start at the midpoint on side AB. At X, we connect that midpoint to the vertex C. That's the median right there. We would do that same thing for midpoint Y. We would connect that to the opposite vertex at A. We would connect the vertex at Z, or excuse me, the midpoint at Z to the vertex B. M, the intersection of those three, is what we call the centroid. Now, the centroid is not equidistant from the sides nor the vertex. What goes on here is that the centroid cuts each of those medians into proportional pieces. So the bigger piece, uh, let me use some different colors here, AM is twice the length of MY. AM is twice the length of MY. So I'm going to write down some relationships that we've got here. So what I just said was AM is twice MY. It's two times as long. We can reverse that relationship. We can say MY is half of AM. Exact same thing, just looking at it from two different perspectives. And then we can also relate it to the entire segment length. So if we want to say AM is a certain proportion of the whole side, AY, what do y'all think it is? AM is what proportion of the entire median AY? If it's twice as long as the shorter piece, any ideas? Two thirds? Two thirds. So if AM is twice the length of MY, let's say that MY is two. Okay, if MY is two, then what is AM? Four. If MY is two, then AM is four. It's twice as long. What's the whole length? Six. Four is what proportion of six? Two thirds of six. Okay. Um, and then we could also talk about MY the same way. <clears throat> MY would be one third of the entire median A, Y. Now we could apply that to any of those medians. We could talk about B, M, M, Z, and B, Z, and we can talk about um, C, M, M, X, and C, X as well. Those relationships apply to all of the medians in a triangle when you're talking about the centroids uh, cutting those medians, okay? All right, the last relationship we have is the orthocenter. The orthocenter is created by the altitudes. Okay, an altitude, you should have heard that term before. An altitude is the perpendicular height. Okay, it's the perpendicular height. So an altitude is created by a vertex connected to the opposite side so that it is perpendicular to that side. Okay, an altitude is created by a vertex connected to the opposite side so that it is perpendicular to that opposite side. So you can see, um, you can see that in the diagram right there. There really aren't any special properties about the altitudes uh, and where they intersect at the orthocenter other than that is what is created when all three of those altitudes intersect. We call it the orthocenter. Um, so mainly what you'll be asked to use are the circumcenter, incenter, and centroid. 
Um, <clears throat> so I've got a worksheet here.